Miyazaki and Disney films are for normies. These are the top five current cartoons, volume six. Whether they be good, bad, or in between, it's Juice and Jam time. Not a bear and not a yeti. I'm getting too old for this shit. I don't know, man. Nickelodeon's Bunsen is a beast. More like, can everyone just chill for a second? This kid's gotta take care of this beast and make sure he blends into society and they get into wacky, loud adventures. The duo must, at the same time, avoid this chick who's basically Crocker or Candace or Dib and wants to expose Bunsen so he'll be deported back to the monster world, I think. This mean girl is named Amanda. She's my sacred propaganda. Who wants him gone and she'll demand a squadron of police. To make him leave, cause I don't want his guys to be angry. Everything is so loud and fast, their voices are each obnoxious, like, please, just chill. It's filled with that fairly odd parents' blissful, obvious sarcasm they always do, you know. Oh gee, I hope I'm not making a, a negative review on a children's cartoon, me as an adult. You know, like that. Because they have something called the Hall of Spears. Do you understand? It's a whole hall of spears! And they have a do not touch sign! Mikey! I want to touch it so bad. It's an okay show at best, while at its worst, I just want to turn this off. Maybe these jokes would have worked better if everyone wasn't yelling or had obnoxious voices or there was some subtlety to things. It's too much to take in. Bunsen is a beast has a constant influx of chaos with nothing to keep it grounded. Some of the jokes work. I like the depressed ice cream man. He's relatable. Commander Cone away to that windowless room I rent behind the nail salon. I used to Popular! And I like how weird this chick gets sometimes. But in a comedy, no matter how bad it is, statistically, there's bound to be some joke that works. You think you're special for making me laugh? Nah, son. There's some genuinely good things to say. As a cartoon from the Fairly Odd Parents, Tough Puppy, and Danny Phantom creator, Butch Hartman, the art style isn't a rehash of his previous cartoons. Props to him for escaping his comfort zone and violating mine. It's your traditional, hey ladies, look at me ritual. Hey ladies, look at me. I'm the handsomest thing you'll ever see. <laughs> Is it working? It is not! That's all I like. This show is hard to sit through. Like, Jesus, calm down. It feels like Butch Hartman phoned this one in, you know? You gotta make a new cartoon. Here, take this. I came up with it last night. Fairly odd parent to Danny Phantom will mostly be fondly remembered. Tough puppy is eh. But this. I don't think anyone will really care about it in five years. The only notable thing Bunsen so far has done was to be shoehorned in a two minute long Butch Hartman crossover short. I'll link to it below, it's just there to advertise Bunsen, it's not that great. What's up? It's me, Bunsen! Nickelodeon has what I call the Spongebob standard, where a new cartoon must be an instant success, or it'll get pushed aside and replaced with even more Spongebob reruns. The only recent cartoon that seemed to survive the Spongebob standard is The Loud House, a simple, fairly grounded show that seems to resonate with enough kids to be successful. You don't need to be so intrusive and obnoxious to entertain kids, something Bunsen is a beast could learn. But I have one question. If the creator of this show is a butch, is it safe to say Bunsen was the bitch? Bunsen is a bitch ass nigga. It took six years, but I finally finished building my dream house. Uh huh. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm late for a raise and I needed a shortcut. Mighty thunderstruck! And I promise to fix that hole. <laughs> Don't be silly. I'm keeping that hole. If I do say so myself, that is a dang nice hole. It's a dang great hole, buddy. Wow. Picture this. Imagine if one of my favorite movies, Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, had a cartoon by Stupid Monkey, the studio behind Robot Chicken. Well, it's finally sort of a thing, minus the Ricky Bobby part. Buddy Thunderstruck on Netflix. Buddy and his best friend Darnell are race car truckers who get into small town adventures, causing trouble and trying to make money out of their races. Different from the usual Stupid Monkey cartoons, Thunderstruck is a kid's show that relies less on vulgarity and more on the absurdity. Hey! Let's 
Try not to wake Muncie or Auntie Uncle. These? Oh, these are air horns. <laughs> I think they're defective. Well, time for bed. I hope I can hear in my dreams. Though on the rare occasion they sneak in a dirty joke, it becomes all the more surprising and hilarious. It's freaking crazy and fast paced. Like they just throw everything at you and a lot of it really worked for me. I absolutely love it. I kind of get a Lego movie vibe from it. Buddy Thunderstruck may be too fast paced, but there is stuff to keep it grounded. Unlike the similar paced Bunsen is a beast. This has much better character relations and they got more than one tone outside of yelling everything. Buddy may be smug and overly confident, but he still has mostly good intentions in what he does. Now I'm broke and have to close the Concho Bolo forever. Oh, Muncie, I'm sorry. My silly rivalry has blinded me to your plight, but I know how to make things right. Darnell, grab the ice. We'll freeze Muncie so she can wake up in a better, brighter future. There's been a recent influx of cartoons with overly fast comedic pacing, and I think Buddy Thunderstruck is the one that balances out the fast pace with a simple premise. It probably also helps the voice actors are using what sounds like regular voices. Oh, as it turns out, no, Buddy is not voiced by Jason Lee. He's really an actor named Brian Allen. But to conclude, I'm impressed hardly anyone is talking about this cartoon. Minus the furry demographic. It's Freaking great! Go watch Buddy Thunderstruck. Netflix has a lot going on. Darnell, I'd say we learned a lesson today, but we did not, so I won't. To get back home, I gotta finish all the levels. I'm gonna be fit Fred and all the battles. Yeah, come on with me! Well, here's a French cartoon no one knows about, so I'll tell you about it. Marcus Level. Marcus gets trapped in a video game and must beat every level to escape. Each episode, he must complete a challenge, whether it be based on tower defense, platforming, or even pipe dream. It's a cartoon that I like the premise for instead of the execution. This acts like a typical webcomic about video games, you know what I mean? Fortunately, the advantage of running a gaming webcomic is that gaming humor is incredibly easy. All you have to do is apply video game logic to the real world for comic effect. For example, in, say, Gears of War, you have to push the analog stick to move forward, when in real life you have to continually put one foot in front of the other. This might not sound like A material, but trust me, phrase this right and there's a fortune to be made in cafe press shirts. But maybe that's giving it too much credit. They're not even commenting or making jokes about video game mechanics. They're just simulating them. It's a standard adventure cartoon with the theme of video games. There's long stretches where it just feels like we're watching someone play a game in silence while occasionally making banter. <laughs> Virus neutralized. Phase two, sample for the antidote. Tweezers? Keep going, Doctor. Oh, it's not that difficult. Hey, kids, it's a video game. You play those, right? Stop all the downloading. Perhaps they're cashing in on the Let's Play demographic. Kids who watch videos of other people playing video games. Could it be a psychological thing? Since when I'm watching this cartoon, I get the feeling of, oh, collect that stuff. Ooh, they got points. I can feel it manipulating me. <laughs> As the series partakes, the hero from the video game Marcus switched with ends up in the real world for a fish out of water comedy. These segments are so short and so basic, they might as well not been in here. And the graphics, it has some mixed design quality, the locations look interesting like they would belong in a Mario or Sonic game, and these low poly illustrations are very stylish. But these character designs look as if they came from the most typical Canadian cartoon. I like to design characters myself, but sometimes I can't explain why I hate some designs in particular. Maybe they're overly detailed or don't look that interesting. The kid's babysitter looks like she was stung by bees at a gay pride rally, while this creature that tags along is a rat with a, a crab's body. Why? I really would love more stories to be in the theme of video games like Scott Pilgrim or Megas XLR, but it's gotta be more than, hey, look, video games, kids, please. Watch the show. While I was searching for any info on Marcus Level, I found a Tumblr blog announcing how it'll be uploading production art. It's been there since 2015, and so far it has posted nothing. Sad. See you at the next level! Un nuevo
nuevo episodio de Los Chicos del Barrio, seguido por las sombrías aventuras de Billy y Mandy. Look out, Timbler. It's the big new thing. Villainous. You got one villain, Black Hat, he's evil, and surrounded by other evil, incompetent idiots. If you've seen Evil Con Carne or The League of Super Evil, you get the gist of this. Villainous is a new series of online shorts by Cartoon Network animated in Mexico, so there's not much you can do with it in the span of a minute. They're funny and basic, but will throw in something completely out of left field at times. Already with what, about six minutes total of footage available, there's a big fandom for villainous. I kind of figured it's because they resemble other Hot Topic bait characters like the Onceler, Harley Quinn, Tortoro, and Chester McBatbad's dad. All they need is an edgy cartoon rabbit and maybe an angry mean girl in purple. You may have figured out already, my favorite character is the perky manic pixie dream girl, Dementia. She really wants to bone Black Hat, the leader of the group. You know him well. <laughs> Black Hat may wear a top hat, but he's definitely a bottom. Villainous is a simple, done-before premise that I think would be good as a full series given its marketable cast. They've also planned on having YouTubers that aren't me and know nothing about animation to voice the characters in the English dub. Now, currently when I'm writing this script, Villainous is not available on any of Cartoon Network's American websites. I theorize they're focusing on promoting the just-released Ben 10 reboot here while saving Villainous for a later time where it won't be overshadowed in maybe a month or two, possibly after Comic-Con. But until then, most people have been obsessing over the Mexican dub version though English versions have surfaced. Claro que me gusta, idiota. Now, what I'm a tad bit envious about is this was part of a Pitch Me Anything contest where any jagoff on the street could pitch a cartoon to Cartoon Network. Alas, no one told me about it. I suppose it wasn't meant to be. I guess my fucking journey continues. Fuck y'all. Take this. Often they believe in one special individual with access whose job it was to speak for the dead. And the dead have much to say. <laughs> Why don't you tell them what dead people are really like, Leo? Maybe Friar Tuck will give you extra credit. We got another Mexican produced cartoon, Legend Quest on Netflix, which the words legend, quest, guardians are typically the most generic titles to have for anything. But anyway, Legend Quests, a paranormal series following Leo who is able to see and befriend ghosts. United, they travel the world solving paranormal mysteries based on folklore of the area. From the Jersey Jevil in Jersey to Kaijus of Japan. And by your armor, I would say you've been dead at least a thousand years. Since the volcano erupted. That's Mount Vesuvius? Oh, wow! I've seen drawings, but, but, but it's so majestic! Yes, it killed us all, but I'm huh? glad you like it. You have to power through the first episode to get to the good stuff. Episode 1 is filled with exposition talking about Leo's previous adventures instead of showing us it. But once it gets going, they're solving mysteries. It's an eerily quiet show in a good way. There's very few bouncy sound cues, and it's so comfortable with religious references and the use of words like damnation or sinful. That's something more accepted in Mexico and not in the United States. I'm glad Netflix didn't censor that stuff out. Out, as far as I know. She said if she ever received a 13th, that child would surely be the devil himself. The woman was a witch. The child was born normal, but it changed. It's still a kid's show, but I like the mood it's able to set while having comedy spurs throughout it. 
Now, this is based on a series of Mexican theatrical films never released here, who I've been told those movies aren't so good. But they're animated by Anima Studios, also known for the Top Cat movie that became one of Mexico's biggest theatrical successes. With Legend Quest, this is them expanding their work into American territories. I'm really glad to see Mexico is having a hand in animation, and to be watching stories of folklore from Mexico outside the typical chupacabras or sugar skulls. Like, watch any story made in America featuring a scene taking place in Mexico. It's either drug cartel filled orange deserts or sugar skulls day of the dead stuff. There's other things in Mexico besides those two things. I have yet to see a single raspa in any of these stories. Ow! My magical butt! I find their animal sidekick Alabrijes so creative. His default form is this dinosaur thing, but when incognito, he takes the form of different colorful animals. He's based on the Mexican paper craft sculptures, also referred to as Alabrijes. These are modeled after different animals and mythical creatures. It's about time someone did something with that. Legend Quest is made by my people, portrays Mexico well, and has an ongoing mystery plot. If you want more story-driven stuff like Gravity Falls, you should watch Legend Quest on Netflix. We're safe up here for now so we can figure things out. We'll make sure our next move is carefully planned and perfectly executed. Don't you want a rematch? Here at KB, the Kool-Aid Burst first day blowout continues with free mini gacks flat by Mattel. Everyone can get a free mini gack when you come to KB. Just bring the back of your Kool-Aid Burst soft drink six pack to any KB toy store and get your free mini gack. Then you can save it to see if you have the one number that matches the winning number all announced on this channel Saturday morning, July 31st for the grand prize of Rama, including a Super NES video game starring you. Happy birthday! For rules in the no purchase game panel, write Game PL Box 7000, Melville, New York 11775. Void were prohibited.